All right, I want you to take a good long look because this is the last time that we have ourselves a babby jeep. Today, we get a jeep, man. We're gonna do the upgrade that separates the youngsters from the professionals. That's right, we're gonna put on a light bar. No, we are going to install long arms, baby. Oh yeah. So, current setup we got here is six inches of lift. We've got uh, Rubicon Express short arms and uh, Rough Country drop brackets. It rides pretty well. It flexes pretty well. I don't really have too many complaints. Uh, when you're in rock gardens and stuff like that and you come down on one of these brackets, you feel that thing all the way up your spine. Yeah, damn, does it hurt. Um, so, the reason why I am looking to go to long arms is one, uh, I want to see, the, the main reason is really just to improve on-road handling, honestly. Uh, I'm wondering if these uh, drop brackets put a little more flexy on the frame and uh, maybe they, they shift around a little bit and this, that, and the other. Uh, but also, I can't get good caster now with uh, six inches of lift. <laughs> if you notice, that, that upper arm is all the way in, so that ain't going to work for me anymore. So, uh, yeah, we're really looking for on-road performance here. But, you know, I'm sure the off-road stuff might be better. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what we can get. A lot of people say that they ride better. Now, for control arm angles, you might not get much better with long arms because what you want to do is look for where it mounts on there and when you're over here it's going to be mounted higher on the frame it's got a longer arc to travel but still that means you're injecting a little more road vibration into the body but eh, I think the extra strength and uh, rigidity should be worth it so anyway we're gonna take off all this junk and put on a kit but what kind of kit? There's so many kits out there. Which one should you get? Well, I really wanted a four link. I really wanted a four link. Uh, but I'm not going to get radius arms. All those stupid Y things where it's just the one lower control arm with the one that... No, no, get out of here. It's not worth it. Get it, just no. We're going to do a proper three link or four link. Uh, I couldn't find a four link kit that I was really happy with. And somebody came out with a new kit and a sale to boot. So I couldn't say no. So we've got here the Iron Rock Off-Road, Rock Link, 3 Link, Long Arm Kit. Yeah, buddy. So this thing is looking friggin' sweet, and it had an even sweeter deal, because most of the Long Arm Kits are running like around a grand. This bad boy brand new is $750, and I got 10% off and free shipping. So yeah, you know your boy done got it. All right, well, enough teasing. Let's go take a look. All right, we got some big old boxes. Let's see what these are all about, huh? Huh? Getting there. Lots of stuff and stickers. Oh boy. Now that is some quality packaging right there. Oh my. Look at that. All foam wrapped and saran wrapped and everything, and it's all nice and clean and purdy. All righty, we are finally in. <laughs> Holy cow, dude, that shipping department must have a field day. But believe me, it is appreciated. I do like seeing the effort put in to keep their products looking nice all the way until they get to the front door. we got ourselves a beefy cross member over here. They even got the name cut in there. That's awesome. I like that. That's really cool. But, dude, these arms. Look at the size of these things, man. What is this? Holy crap. Like, dude. My lord, like, the video is not doing it right, you know. It, this is, this is gargantuan. Like, I can't believe this is a long arm kit. Like, oh man, what are we doing? Lifting a tank over here? These are incredible. <laughs> Just look at, look at all them threads, man. Look at them. Holy. Holy. That is monstrous. We got our square end over here. We got our rubber bushings. And the, uh, these spherical ends over here uh, have kits so we can build them. So what we have are these two frame brackets here, which will hold our, our arms. And we can drop the cross member and leave these in place on the frame 
so you can take the transmission out without removing your arms. So that is awesome. A plus on that. Now, uh, as for the wrapping, they did a really damn good job. So I'm not really too worried about, you know, little bits of paint chipped here or there. I mean, that's probably like one of the harder parts to wrap. But I mean, seriously, they, they really did put in the effort. I don't know what else they really could have did. So, yeah, I'm not worried about that. Okay, so we also got a cross member drop kit for you goobers that don't feel like putting an SYE on. We got our two uh, end kits over here, so we can uh, put these all together. And then we have some other stuff. One more end kit and a lot of hardware, along with the instructions. Oh man, I am, <laughs> I haven't even put anything on yet and I'm super impressed with this. This looks like a beast. So yeah, getting this thing on sale with free shipping, an absolute killer deal right here. I am so psyched. I've been waiting a really long time to go long arm, so I think I finally made the right choice. Now I gotta go outside in the cold. I don't like that part. That part sucks. And in case you were wondering, the threading on this thing is no joke. Look at all that. <laughs> oh my word. Alright, so let's start off with the instructions. So first we're gonna prepare the parts for installation. So we're gonna find our lower control arms and our hardware kit 127 and 181 so 127 is these guys 181 is this little guy okay upper control arm uses hardware kit 168 okay so this is our lower or, i'm sorry this is our upper okay and uh, i guess we just put all them joints together all right so first up we got to assemble our balls polish too so uh yeah this is pretty self-explanatory but we got a uh a thrust washer, the plastic sleeve that the ball sits in, that sandwiches it. We've got four that go on each side with uh, nylon nuts. Actually, these are just six. And uh, then we got a little um, insert fitting to grease it. So in case you need a diagram, that's how she look. Pretty simple. Um, you know, everything's pretty self-explanatory except for the um, the torque spec. So we torque them all to 50 inch pounds, then to 65 inch pounds going in a crisscross, and then we grease it all up and then retorque it to 65 inch pounds in five minutes. So remember, inch pounds ain't much. You divide that by what, 12 to get your uh, your other no number. So it's like it's like six foot pounds. It's not much. It's enough to be called tight. <laughs> they said it is a light press fit. Yeah, it's pretty light. You'll have to make sure that the uh, these guys align properly when you stick your down diddly bolts through. Oh, Shay. Make sure the peg's greased up nice and good. So you got the three in this end and the three in this end. And you just mesh them all together. I might be making a mistake trying to do all six at once, but, you know. What you gonna do when it comes for you? But yeah, you kind of squeeze them together until they all kind of fit. Oh, there you go. She's going together. Not bad. Okay, here's a little pro tip for you. They tell you this in the instructions, but if you notice, there is no clearance to get a uh, wrench of any kind or to actually spin the nut in general. So uh, the way that you're supposed to do this is uh, tighten it with the, uh, the wrench. So you're actually tightening the bolt into the nut because the housing is what holds the nut in place. So uh, yeah. That should be exciting. Okay, so after we all done, it should look a little something like that. God, I had to take the whole grease gun apart and pull the thing out and take all the grease out of the bottom and put it back on the top because when it gets hot, it slips through and, yeah, bullshit. Tightening this thing down, pain in the ass. What else is now? So, to get your inch-pound torque wrench, this right here is a beam style if you've ever seen something like this. So it's actually two beams, and it just uses... um. Whatever the heck it is, but when it bends, it, it tells you the number. So you tighten them all to 50, and then you tighten them all to 65, then you wait 5 minutes, then you tighten them all to 65 again, because I guess the grease has to move around or whatever. And uh, yeah, you fill her, fill her chock full of grease. So uh, yeah, okay, that's one down. Eh. So the upper control arm is actually a slightly smaller design. It actually has, a, it's got four on each side, and it's also got threaded... Um, thrust plates or whatever so you don't even have to worry about nuts on that but same exact design so the ball goes in and then you put the two halves together and you tighten her up okay so now we got this side all assembled as well so we had to use the uh, <laughs> redneck torque wrench over here had an allen key inside an extension 
just so I could get some torque on the damn thing. Now since they are smaller bolts, um, I didn't torque them as much. But uh, this is a 964th or something. Yeah, 964th. So that was fun. So now they give you a chart over here where uh, you compare your lift height and they give you a starting measurement. So from center to center, we will measure and try to match this. So since I'm at like five and a half, we'll do 36 and a half, 37 and a quarter. And then they just tell you to put a little anti-seize on there and tighten these up loosely. The last part is to tighten up these joints. Uh, you're going to get four of these guys, four of these guys for the, uh, the lower arms. And this is just for the upper arm. So pretty self-explanatory. Got the nuts. They, they got little pockets that hold them. And little dinger dingers. Of course that's uh, bigger than all the other ones. That is a 3 16 And then the upper one just goes in that little pocket over there. Now, we have to prepare things on the vehicle. So, the first thing that we're going to do is worry about the transmission area and the, uh, the cross member. So, what I'm going to do is you come under here and we're going to unbolt the transmission mount right there. You're going to have four nuts. Oh, I used to have four. <laughs> Some of them snapped. So, when we undo that, then the transmission will be free and we can jack it up a little bit and support it just so that it's off the cross member. Okay, so we got ourselves a nice big old jick under the transfer case, jack stand too, so it's actually lifted up off the uh, cross member a little bit. So now that the drivetrain is supported, now we can start to take these bolts off. Oh boy, I think it's time for some nut busting power. Both of these do have some amount of movement, that's good, but they've also come out in the last couple of years, so they have been touched. Now, I got a new toy right here. Got a Milwaukee half inch impact uh, gun. I forget what the box said. These are like 650 or 450 or some, some ridiculous amount of nut busting torque. So I really want to try this out. Now, slightly unfair because this one has another piece, and the more pieces you have, the more wiggle room and less nut busting power you got. But. I know this one is a little tight, so let's see, can the little 3 8 inch do her? Oh, that's no fun. It can do her. Well, anyway, since we're here, how you doing, baby? Oh, that's naughty. Damn. <laughs> and this has got different speeds on it, too, which is interesting. Cool. Okay, take two. These ones have not been touched. So let's see how 3 8 does. That's more like it. Half inch. Ooh, baby. But again, you notice there's absolutely no vibration because there's no, uh, there's no wiggle room. And that does help a tremendous amount. But yeah, she kicks ass, so that's cool. Oh yeah, the cross member's free. Transfer case was supported, right? <laughs> oh yeah, also make sure your head's not there. Because, uh, you know, that probably wouldn't end too well. Okay, well, now that that part's free, I guess we need to uh, enjoy the uh, fun task of removing studs. Okay, so for use of, the, for use of those that don't know, you put a nut and then another nut, you hold this one while you tighten that one, and then they're locked. Then you loosen from the top one, and instead of taking off the nut, these two lock together so you can take the stud out instead. I don't know how stubborn this thing is. It moves a little bit, but it doesn't want to go all the way around. So, that should be fun. But that's how you do that. It's a little uh, more effective when you do it this way with the closed end. That way there's no flex. So as long as she stays tight, a lot easier to hold on to at least. She's coming though. Oh, she's coming. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you bust a stud with two nuts. Wait. Okay, so it would appear that the um, <laughs> that thing's got too much chooch for chach. This thing's shot now. She's uh, she no clicky clacky, all loosey goosey. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, it, it took the stud out fine, but when I went to go break the nut off, it, it killed the fucking wrench, so... Rest in peace, Mr. 15. Let's see how a craftsman can do. Okay, trick number two. So now you got the wrench on here, but you're a puny little man, and you can't turn it. You don't have the torque. Well, you can multiplier torque with no wrenches. So you hook said wrench on here like this. It works better with a, with a, a normal wrench, so you can slip it on straight. But when you hook it in here like this, you can push on this one instead now. Arr, and get your torque ha ha ha. And she turns. Excellent. Oy, oy, oy. Okay, so now that we got all of our holes clean for the most part, one, two, and this one here is going to be number three. So as you can see, this one has got three different mounting holes. So we'll have to drill this guy out and tap her and get her ready so we can slop it on in there, y'all. Nice. <sighs> Wouldn't you friggin' know, the only one I'm missing is the 71614. We got a 1720, so we got the fine thread, but not the coarse. Yeah, bastard. Okay, so there we go. We got her tapped, ready to go. Got a fap on set here that I borrowed from a friend, so we can get the job done. So the interesting thing was I finally found a drill bit that fit the uh, the 2364, which is a just a, a smidge under 3 eighths. But uh, the hole was already that size. Like the drill bit just went right in. Like it, it didn't cut any metal. Move some dirt out of the way. That was about it. So I don't know. I guess some models might be already set for what you need. But anyway, there you go. Look at that. Nice and threaded, ready to go. Beauty. All right, guess we'll do the other side. Okay, so here we have all of our bolts over here. We got two. 110s, two 100s, 190, a bunch of carriage bolts, a bunch of regular bolts, a bunch of washers, nuts, a flange nut, and some bigger flange nuts. Okay, so now we install the upper control arm. So that was the M1490, so the smaller of the big bolts. And this goes from the center out so it can be removed. Okay, so this guy. This guy goes into that guy, and then that guy into that guy, yeah? Something like that. The bend faces down to clear the floor. And we can tighten this down, and what we're going to do is uh, bolt onto the frame skis. Alright, so it's weird that they use different sizes. I guess they didn't want you to have to tap metric. So, you've got four metric bolts here, the, uh, the M10s which uh, each one gets a washer. And then for the front two that we tapped, we put in our 7 16th inch bolts and washers. So yeah, have fun with that because now we got different, different bolts, whatever. Okay, so here we have the cross member in place. I just have them, all the bolts and washers lightly on there. So our 7 16th goes in the front, two metric in the back, washer for all of them, and good to go. Same on that side. Now they tell you to put the uh, the upper control arm in before you do that. Uh, if you leave them a little loose, you got enough room you can slip it in there. Same with the bolt, you should have enough clearance to get past the drive shaft if you want. Because uh, that ain't going to fit with uh, all that crap still in the way. So, part is to attach our center section, you know, the normal cross member bit to the, uh, the two outers. So this uses carriage bolts, which are interesting. So we got our M10 by 25 carriage bolts. That's the smaller ones out of the two, 25s and 50s. Three washers, M10 nuts. So we need one, two, three, four. Don't forget to go nuts. All right. So these are carriage bolts. We got a little square in there to hold them in place. Interesting. So the weird thing is they go through the bottom and then you have to put the nuts on the top. Dude, that sounds like such a pain in the ass to install. I mean, I know why they did it, so that you can have bottom clearance, but like, come on. That's kind of, it's kind of poop. I'd much rather have like some kind of recess system where you got nuts, but they're just hidden or something. Like, oh, this is going to suck. We can see the differences here. I know it's not on level ground or flat ground or whatever, but, you know, cool. So, carriage bolt fits in that little squared diddly. So that way it doesn't turn. So that's cool. 
It might not be too bad if they like if they were tight, like if it, if it was a nice interference fit so they don't fall out. That might be an idea. But yeah, you just spin it until the square drive lines up. And now there you go. Beautiful. Okay, nice and beefy though compared to uh you know this little tin can. It's held up though, so can't be that bad. The uh, the text faces forward. All right. Let's see if we can get it to sit in there. Oh man, that's some goddamn bullshit right there. No thanks. So first off, it bends up here, so you can't actually you know see what the heck you're doing. You're blind eyeing the thing, and they're just like like come on. Couldn't think of anything better than that. That's kind of that's that's pretty poop. Oh, fucking pain in the ass. Got to do the old juggle routine, and <laughs> they expect you to get a washer on that nut too. <laughs> yeah, funny. You guys are funny. Fuck. Okay, so once you're done juggling that damn thing, it should look a little something like that. So, yeah. Should be nuts and washers in there. Bit of a fucking pain in the ass design, honestly, but whatever. I think it'd kill them to have a little fucking cutout so at least you can see what the hell you're doing, but... Uh. I like how they put this on the next page, but so they say if you're going to use the, uh, the the drop bracket, then use these longer carriage bolts. So that's what these guys are for. So we won't need them. Um, and then it just tells you to torque all the bolts to their specific torque ratings. So once it's all torqued up, then you can drop the transfer case down and torque that down. So yeah, okay, that's pretty much everything there. And daylight, ain't that looking pretty? Sweet. Okay, so now we can move over to the front of the Veckel. So uh, we're going to remove our uh, control arms. We're going to remove our drop. And then the fun part of cutting the lower brackets off the frame. There is no going back <laughs> when you do this. So you better hope you want yourself a long arm. Okay, let's start uh, undoifying some things. All right, Milwaukee time to uh, prove your urn. So here we have the lower control arm uh, bolt. It's a 13th uh, 16th. And uh, yeah, we're gonna see how she do, eh? All we got is a little WD on here. Other than that, this thing has not been touched in a while. Damn, son. <laughs> wow, it's nice to have uh, actual power. That's cool. Oh my, I'll have to put something on that end. Okay, well, that's what a uh, Rubicon Express arm looks like after, what are we on, three, three years or something like that? Eh, not bad. Okay, the uppers should be a little easier because they've uh, come out recently. Then we can take off this drop bracket. Upper control arm is removed. We had a 15 and a 17, I think, millimeter. So now those are out and free. Good to go. Now to beat one of the bolts out, and then the other one was nice and uh, easy to take out afterwards. The axle and body separated like a little bit. We're talking about like maybe a quarter inch. But you know, they are, you know, kind of free to move around, so you gotta be careful what's going on. So I just wanna go over the safety things going on real quick. I have a jack stand on each side. I'm only doing one side at a time, so the tire's on. Uh, I got the transmission supported, but even if that were to fall, the cross member will catch that. And now I've got something under the frame too, just so that, you know, everything's got some safety. We don't want this thing falling down on us. You know, for some strange reason, the whole axle decided to just wanted to fuck right off that way. Body would come down, so that's no good. So, make sure you got something under the frame. And we can move on. So, for those of you that don't have drop brackets, you're done. For those of you that do, <laughs> we got to take this bolt and that bolt. Now, I want you to be real cognizant of that hole, because this mother will eat your 15 millimeter sockets like they're nothing dude so just make sure when you're pulling out of the hole you don't slip because otherwise the socket goes rolling down in there and gets lost for a while ask me how i found that one out so you know all right i take this bracket off okay correction that is a 17. 
could have swore it was a 15, but apparently not. Okay, lovely. Magnets, man. They are your friend. Okay, um, so that little friggin' piece came off. So now I think the only thing that's holding this in is probably these guys in the back and maybe that obnoxious piece. Do we really gotta separate this whole thing? Oh, I think we do. That's poop. Okay, yeah. So that part was holding it in and that part was holding it in and all that crap. So every little bolt's gotta come out. But whatever. Okay. So once everything's free, you can just wiggle it, wiggle it right out. So here is the lower uh, mounting bracket for the control arm. And basically, we're just gonna cut everything out. <sighs> Fuck that sun is bright. Okay, so from what it said, everything on the frame, like on the inner frame side, needs to go if it's not part of the unibody. They also say it's easier to take this thing out in chunks. So. What we'll do is, uh, I guess we'll we'll start on the outside. Oh god, there's like pockets and things. And <laughs> oh god, I hope you have lots of cutting discs, man. Dear lord, this is gonna suck. Okay, so here is cut number one. So now you can see a little bit better what's going on here. So even though we were flush here. It still sticks in a bit on the inside because there's a triangulated piece right here. So we'd have to cut farther in, I guess, to try to get more of that done. What a pain in the butt that is. Tell you what though, these new discs that I got cut a lot better than the old things I had. These actually last. <laughs> you can cut quite a bit with these. Nice. Okay, so I'm trying to break into this triangle piece here so I was going a little high at first but I stopped and looked and realized I was a little too high that's the uh, part of the frame we want to keep I started going a little lower so that I could actually follow this so I cut a little piece here so I can see what the heck I'm doing oh man what a mess okay so now I got this back piece trimmed off right there I cut a little bit more out of this so it's flush ish so the last piece is here just be cognizant of what's behind. Don't hit your uh, fuel lines, your brake lines, or <laughs> any of those things. But we're just gonna nip this thing off, and then we might, and then we might have to clean that up a little bit. But we're basically there. And keep the crap out of time. Okay. So to cut that, we're still connected on the back side. Which is interesting. So this whole thing moves because it's obviously separated here, but it's still connected to this back piece. Ugh. So that's the last thing that we gotta cut, but I'm not sure where to cut. I mean, I could just go there and, I don't know, beat it down or, I don't know, be estered. So surprise, surprise, you will have to take the drive shaft out to be able to get to this. Because the drive shaft <laughs> sits here. I gotta move it way out of the way to be able to get the grinder in here at all to cut this inner plate because the inner plate is separate from the uh, this outer crap. So I cut it and then I cut it and then I cut it and then I beat it with a hammer to try to push it in. So it should be okay now. So, cool. So I guess we'll come in here with either uh, a nice grinding wheel to grind this up, maybe a flap disc, just to make it look pretty. But I think we're done. This side. Ugh. Okay, let's see if the phone will not die on me this time. So, we cleaned that all up with a flap disc and a grinding wheel. We painted it, just a quick spritz. We got the upper control arm in, just to uh, see that everything fits. And we have our proper clearances. So that looks good. No problems there. So that's bolted up and all that's good to go. All right. Well, I guess we're done here, so now I gotta do it all again on the other side. Eh. Okay, so removing all the control arms is making me a little nervous. So what we're gonna do instead is, you know, I guess follow the directions. So now that I feel like everything's together, I torqued up the cross member. 65 foot-pounds for the big bolt, 50 foot-pounds for the smaller bolts, 45 for the cross member bolts, and uh, yeah. 
and then we lower. Now luckily, all of our uh, studs have aligned. So, let's see, does she die? Or are we good? Drop the load! Huh. That looked a little loosey-goosey. What's going on there? Is my transmission not cracked? Hold up there, homeboy. What the hell is that? Uh, I don't know if you can see that. I don't think that's normal. It looks like my <laughs> the whole mouth just... Are you fucking kidding me? What the fuck? Maybe that's what the rear end shifty feeling is. Huh. Well, ain't that some shit. And of course now our fucking cross member's tight, so... Changing that's going to be a little more difficult. Oh, you bastard. So this one looks like it's got a crack in it too, but it hasn't visually, uh, it's completely separated yet. Still, what the hell? Um, <laughs> well, either we get a new mount or we uh, do some bootleg and uh, fix that up because the rubber's still good. We'd have to put a flat plate over that, drill a hole through it and weld it or clamp it or do some crap. Ain't that some shit. Okay, so we got the upper installed and we got the lower installed. I had to uh, loosen this up about eight turns to get her to get even close. Uh, I think the axle is moving forward. I'm wondering if the springs are starting to push the axle forward because all this holding this together is that upper and that bolt's real cockeyed. So I'm worried that uh, <laughs> the whole axle is just going to want to fuck right off when I take that bolt out. So I have the lower installed on this side to hold things in place a little bit. We've got a jack stand on both sides of the, uh, the, um, the body and both sides of the axle. So everything should be supported. So as long as the springs, uh, you know, don't sprung and this long, this arm over here holds everything together, we should be okay. So we can pull that arm and do the uh, same to this, that, to that, and, you know, things. I was right, she was under a little bit of tension. <laughs> You can see how far off the hole is. The body slid back a little bit and the axle moved forward a little bit. So yeah. A little sketchy. Just a little. But anyway, now that that arm's free, uh, we can drop that side and drop all this stuff and So we're back in the daylight. I forget where we last left off, but now we get to cut off this arm as well. So this should be fun. So now that we know what the heck's going on, we can Get a slice in here, and then split a slice in there, and you know. Just keep going until all the metal's gone. Alright, so this one's always tricky to figure out because the angles are all messing with your head and stuff. But, you got your first one over here. And then you can see just how much of that triangle's really going on. I don't know, get bright. I'm trying to get that cut right. The first time is a, a bit of a pain in the ass because it really does mess with your head. I'm trying to figure out where to cut on the frame. Just remember that this whole thing just comes flat out. It doesn't angle, so... Yeah, you kind of figure it out. You gotta, you gotta go in there. Okay, so sometimes you can't really get the grinder everywhere you need to be. I could get there and I can get up to there, but I can't get to that corner. Not room in here. And there's not a whole lot of room over here either. But, as long as you can get most of it, channel locks and uh, a little bit of muscle will get you going. Oh. Okay, so now we're getting there. All we gotta do is slice this and then clean up the inside a little bit. We should be golden. Alright, she's all free. So, the first cut out here and then I came inside and did the other side. So instead of cutting the damn thing like two or three times, all you're doing is cutting both layers because the, the thing won't really get to both. So just, damn, that's actually a lot of metal. <laughs> it's like three different plates right there. Holy shit. Okay, so now we're going to take the, uh, the grinding disc, clean that up, and then hit it with the flap to make it look shiny. All right, flap disc to the rescue. So, so great on the cut the first time. At least you can clean it up, make it look a little pretty afterwards. Yeah, what? Magic. 
All right, hit her with some paint. We're done cutting. <laughs> okay, so she's all painted, looking pretty. We got the lower arm in. Beat the crap out of this until it uh, moves into position. You can use a flathead to try to wiggle it once you get her close. Now, luckily on the uh, the passenger side, this this joint actually wants to slide in. On the driver's side, it beat it pretty good to get it to go in there. But looks like my custom exhaust is having some issues. Yeah, I can't get the arm all the way in because it hits the exhaust. So uh, yeah, we're gonna have to figure something out. I don't know how the hell uh, you're supposed to bend exhaust, especially when it's on the vehicle. It's uh, fuck. Open headers would be quite loud trying to go to an exhaust shop. Ugh. All right, homeboy, there ain't no going back now. Sawzall to the rescue. So we got ourselves a little two and a half inch coupler because my exhaust is two and a half. So what the plan is gonna be is we're gonna chop a little more off this and we're gonna fucking scoop this all over and bend it and do whatever we need to. Hopefully she uh, stays off the drive shaft and then we'll have the clearance we need. Bastard. Start it, old peeps, pussy. Fine. Thing sounds cammed. Mmm, <laughs> smell that exhaust. <laughs> Fuck, that thing's loud. Alright, I'm gonna take that off so we can put in our, our oxygen sensor and then uh, clamp this together. So, pro tip if you ever have to change the transmission mount, you don't have to take all four bolts out. Just take three of the four out and then you can pivot it out of the way. Cool. Make sure there's enough thread on there that thing doesn't want to try to kill you later. But, uh, yeah, what do you think, E? Just a wee bit. <laughs> Alright, this thing is pissing me off to no end. I don't know what the fuck to do. I'm just denting the shit out of it. So, some people suggested heat and beat. So, I can't really find a good fucking place to anchor this anywhere. I'd love, absolutely fucking love, to put this goddamn thing somewhere so that I could, you know, uh, if I could put a jack between the frame or something and physically, hydraulically press it because fuck this thing, man. I hate exhaust. I hate exhaust. I hate fucking exhaust. Piece of shit. So, I'm going to take this fucking thing and heat it cherry red and beat the shit out of it and see if I feel a little better. Getting it to bend would be a plus too. I give up. That didn't do fucking shit. First off, I can't really get a ton of heat on there, but... Uh, I'm not, uh, I got nothing, dude. I can't do this without hydraulics. I, it's, not, it's not happening. Fuck this thing. We're bolting it up. We're fucking done. Sick of it. Alright, new mount. Your mother father god makes me wonder if i should reinforce that or something because that's a bunch of shit things like paper thin needs like a whole freaking center plate thing whatever okay new mount is if you're curious it's offset towards the driver's side and uh i got some big ass washers in there so hopefully that'll help spread the load and prevent the damn thing from cracking again <sighs> piece of shit. Uh, I'm gonna leave the cross member uh, disconnected loosely for now because uh, I figured it'd be a lot easier to weld this exhaust when it's hanging down instead of when it's up here. So uh, yeah, I guess now we're gonna try to figure out how to get the damn thing to connect. Shut up. Uh, well, I guess that's a little better. We did have some clearance, but not a whole lot. And basically the part where I got really angry and beat the shit of it didn't do a whole lot. It's pushed in, but eh. Fuck it. I hate this thing. I'll just let it self-clearance. Fucking pain in the ass. I hate exhaust. Alright, I think it's time to do this. So we got this. Got some tacks on there. We got clearance-ish. It should be enough because you figure this side down here isn't going to bend as much. So as long as we get the clearance in the front, that's where it matters. And if it has a self-clearance a little, fuck it. I am tired of this thing. We got room around there. And it looks like we should have room for the sensor, so that's cool. And this thing also like pivots up and around too, so whatever. Got the ground clamp over there. So we're gonna see what happens. If that bounces around a lot, then I'll stick something through that metal tube and weld a, a little hanger on here. I might do that regardless, I don't know, just to give it some more support, but yeah. I think I'm gonna drop this and uh, try to weld it. Looks like a flaming pile of dog shit, but it'll hold. 
It's a shame. When I was comfortable, like over here, it was actually starting to look really nice. Like, look at that, huh? That almost looks like I know what I'm doing right there. And you come down here. It's because I was comfortable. You know, the machine was working with me, the temperature was right, I could just, I could get everything. On this side, I was all cramped. And just, I couldn't. Oh my god, what a pain in the ass trying to do this. Why the fuck? If I'm touching here, you focus over there, you fuck. Folk S. Focus? Whatever, it looks like shit. But, it'll hold. It's not a show Jeep. It's gonna get beat around in the mud and the rocks anyway, so, fuck it. Okay, I think the exhaust is done. Now we can actually go back to uh, what this video is about a long arm kit. Pile of shit. Oh, oh my god. What a fucking shit show it is trying to get this piece of shit on here. Seriously, this is such a shit fucking design. Gotta hold the bolt like this and try to hold this whole fucking thing with one hand while you freaking wiggle a nut in there or something you can't fucking see. It's like, come on, really? I know it's a simple design, but fuck. What I would rather see is have the carriage bolts sit on the top, so that way you just have to put the nuts on the bottom, that way you're not trying to juggle a fucking bolt, juggle this fucking thing. I'm trying to put a fucking nut on you can't even see to begin with. It's like, come on. God, that's such a fucking pain in the ass. I couldn't even get the washer on there. Holy shit. But once you get one started, at least now it's hold, held in place so we can fuck with the other ones. But god damn. Fuck. Okay, so now comes the fun part of deciding your wheelbase. So as you can see, the uh, tire is definitely farther forward. Now I'm going to bring it back a little bit. Um, because you notice our springs are all kinds of fucker. Hopefully, uh, you know, we'll bring that in a little bit so our springs don't go bodoinga doinga. Um, the other thing is that uh, our caster's way far forward, so that's also going to be what's cocking this thing. So, uh, maybe I should see if I can uh, bring that there first. But, yeah. Again, there's measurements, so I guess we'll try to look at the measurements and line that up. But it looks like it has to come back a little bit. Having a little bottle jack on the farthest forward point you can hit. We'll pivot the axle. So that's it. That's all I did. I just jacked on this and it actually pushes the axle back because the, the lower ones are fixed. So that's the only thing it can do. So uh, yeah, slide the bolt in there. And now, if you notice our springs aren't crooked anymore. See that? If you notice they're actually even slightly back. But that's, that's a straight spring right there. So there you go. Huh, caster. Cool. Yeah, so if we wanted to, <laughs> we could just keep it like that. Doesn't look half bad, honestly. I don't know. I'm kind of happy with it. Okay, so we got the tape measure sitting underneath the spring perch. So when we rotate it up, we're trying to center this up. We're at like 58. And the dash, I think that's 16. On this side, let's see what the other side looks like. Maybe 58 and... Maybe a mark past a quarter. So, it looks like the axle is farther back on the passenger side by a quarter inch. I'm not sure how much that matters. What I'm thinking is when I, I swapped this rear axle in that maybe it wasn't centered. And I just didn't, you know, I didn't notice. So, I don't know. I think we're just going to adjust the arms so that they're the same length. And, you know, if it, if the track width is off a quarter inch and it's really that bad, well, then we'll have to loosen them up and possibly get new U-bolts because you're not supposed to reuse U-bolts even though those are beefy. I don't know how much uh, they're stretched and if they'll even come apart. Okay, so here's the leftover hardware. We got a nut for each lower bolt. Uh, we've got a washer for each lower bolt and one for the upper uh, that goes into the cross member. And then we've got our nut for the upper on the axle end and a washer on each side for that. I would assume. Okay. Well, I guess we bolt it all up and uh, call it good. Torque spec uh, for the big bolts is 135 foot-pounds and the upper uh, axle end is 60. Before we start tightening everything up, I just wanted to check the caster real quick. So, we have our lift height and our desired caster. So at five and a half inches, we should have about four and a half degrees of caster. But, this is how we do it. You got yourself a magnetic base angle finder. 
and we've got a little slot here where we can connect this onto the axle see that would freaking hold and you just want it to be parallel with the wheel and we can check it out so we're looking at about five and a half caster so if we wanted we could do this a little less now what you're fighting here with the caster is the farther forward it is the easier the uh tires will return back to center to to a point you know like it, it helps it you know just drive straight and not want to wander everywhere um, but you're also fighting the pinion angle. Yeah, so the, the more cast you have, the lower your pinion angle goes. And when you have a double carden shaft like this, where you have two U-joints at one end and one U-joint at the bottom, the end with a single U-joint is supposed to point directly at the case. You're actually supposed to leave about one degree of difference just so that this U-joint actually turns and, but you know, with suspension travel it will. But that's what you're supposed to do. So if this is not pointing directly at the case and it's starting to go down and down and down, the lower down it is, the more likely you are to have highway vibrations. So basically, if you notice after you put a kit on like this, you mess around with your caster and things like that, and you got a lot of highway vibes, what you're going to have to do is reduce some of your caster so it might not go straight, but it'll take away the highway vibes. So you just got to kind of play with it until you get what you need. So you put it all together, take it for a drive. If it's quiet, you did good. If it's not, well, pull it apart and change the caster. Okay, so this is the fun part where you remember how much uh, stress your axle is under. So even if you're test fitting, it's probably useful to put the washers in. So that way, if you do get it right on the first try, you don't have to take it all apart and fuck all your shit up. So here is the issue that we're running into. Um, first, I couldn't get that bolt to go in straight. So then I removed this end. I noticed this one was under tension. I had to pry it out. Especially to keep it off the, uh, the grease fitting. So now... When we go to put the fucker back, she doesn't quite fit. She's off a little bit. Now it was off even more than that, but it's because I'm using my winch. <laughs> Whoever thought you'd have to winch your selfie. So I got the cable coming out down and just right onto the C right down there to help pull the axle forward. It's not over. It's not under a lot of tension. Like I can actually pull this by hand. And actually get the axle tilt so we shouldn't be putting an incredibly too much amount of uh, tension onto this not the best angle but what are you gonna do and I'm just gonna slowly keep bumping it until I can get that in there enough to use the pry bar to wiggle it the rest of the way so hopefully we can uh, get that in there but yeah that's how to uh, move your axle around if you got a winch anyway if you don't have a winch you could try a ratchet strap and check this convoluted setup out so we got a, a mirror <laughs> positioned between the mount and the frame. I got a light there to light up our spot <laughs> so you could see the bolt on the other side. And then I had the pry bar on this to pry to get that to line up and hit it with a, a hammer to get it through. It worked, but man, is that a pain in the ass. <laughs> okay. Oh, by the way, you did put it in the right direction, right? I forget if I went over this, but the joint is actually cockeyed to one side. So if you notice, even though the threads are going out, this part is still parallel. If you flip it around, you can tell it's, it's at the wrong angle. So make sure this is at the right angle when you put it in there. So once everything is tight, we'll make sure these joints are straight and then we'll tighten up these lock nuts. Right, so final step, after all of our bolts are torqued to 135, which by the way is a lot. Oh dear Lord, <laughs> got the top in there. Uh, with the top one, I took this one out and I had to take that one out to get this one to line up easily. But you put that one in and then with that you can just use the jack trick to change your uh, your caster and that'll slide right in. So that one's real easy to put in. Uh, but yeah. Then we just got these guys to tighten them down. This locks them onto the threads so they don't weeble wobble and loosen up over time. With these guys you got Allen heads. They are 3 16 inch. These ones are easy to get with a socket. That inside one's a bit of a pain in the ass to get to. It kind of sucks. But, uh, yeah, otherwise, they're all tight. So there you go. That's the whole long longer kit right there. She's all installed. Cool beans, man. Cool beans. So I guess now we're going to take her for a drive, see if uh, anything happens. We're obviously going to clean up some wires first, but... So, it's been a while. It's been a little while. It's been a little wilder than a while. If you follow the Instagram, you would have seen this quite a long time ago, honestly. But, uh, yeah. So, how does it drive? 
Uh, kind of the same. <laughs> I kind of figured this from the start uh, because of the control arm angles. The only thing that I do notice um, is that there's a little less brake dive. I don't know if the axle actually handles any better or not. Uh, I don't know. A little less brake dive, but otherwise it feels about the same over bumps and stuff. The control arm angles are what control that, so the drop brackets, it was fine. Uh, so yeah, off-road. It, it does feel a little uh, smoother off-road, though. It kind of feels like it goes over bumps a little easier and whatnot. But yeah, I don't know. I hit a bump pretty hard and heard some weird clunk. I have no idea what it was. I don't see any rub marks anywhere, so I have no idea what the heck that was, but eh, you know. Now, uh, on to steering. I noticed that the rear axle was back a little bit, and keeping the um, both arms the same length, the front was actually forward on the passenger side a little bit too. And someone mentioned about how that's a factory thing to keep the vehicle going straight with road crown. And yeah, I guess uh, that is, because I wasn't sure, and I had this arm a little uh, shorter, and it, it did feel like it wanted to pull right sometimes you know, trying to get the, the angle straight. So, yeah, even if uh, your wheelbase doesn't seem right, <laughs> left or right, uh, keep the arms at the same length, because once I, I re-lengthen that, it seems like it wants to drive a lot straighter now, even though the axle should technically be, you know, crooked to the left a little bit. Um, yeah, caster's good. Uh, another cool thing is, now that the springs are back farther, I was actually able to take my uh, sway bar drop brackets off. That's why I had them on there, because I had to... Uh, bring the sway bar forward to keep them off the springs but now the sway bar works a lot better I found this out uh, the sway bar actually has a proper angle that it needs to work at <laughs> so when you drop the uh, the bracket down then it's it's at the wrong angle and it doesn't quite it's not as stable so that was really cool I'm happy about that at least so the big question should you get long arms uh, well do you like spending money yes are you still on short arms without drop brackets, and you like to play in the rocks a lot? Yes. Do you have drop brackets, and you only mildly off-road? No. Not really. This kit was kind of a pain in the ass. I mean, some things were nice, some things were clean, but the adjustability is... Eh, there's a little to be desired. Bit of a pain in the ass, so if you're working on this a lot, yeah. The price is good. You know, it's, it's a really good price. And the arms and everything look good. The hardware looks pretty beefy. Um, one of my bolts came out. This guy in the back. <laughs> After a, a trip, I saw that this bolt was hanging down. I'm like, oh, that's not good. Let me tighten it up. And it's just spinning and spinning and spinning. I'm like, oh, okay. So I had to drill that out and tap that to the next size bigger. So, yeah, there you go. So that's a long arm kit. There you go. Now we can be big boys. So we're not going to break our spine under the... Uh, when we land on rocks and maybe have a little more clearance. I have no idea. But, uh, yeah. There you go. Hope that helps you with your uh, decision making. Stay long, my friends. <laughs>